Greetings and blessings in the name of our risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. Alleluia. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Alleluia. We are beginning our time of worship together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for the unity of the Holy Spirit. Holy Father, your Son prayed for his disciples that they would be one, as you and he are one. Keep your whole church harmoniously together in faith and love, united by the one Spirit. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. None of us need reminding that we live in unusual and testing times. But really, are we any worse off than our ancestors who only a hundred years ago endured the horrors of the Spanish flu, which came hot on the heels of, of World War I? Casualty statistics alone suggest that, so far, Australia and most of the rest of the world have escaped relatively lightly with COVID-19. And before anyone gets upset, I'm in no way trying to, do, to dismiss the sadness we are feeling at the moment over the loss of life this pandemic has brought. It is truly sad that so many people have died from this virus. But, how many more have survived it? Worldwide statistics, as at 20th of, of May, report that 86% of total cases have survived. That's 1,979,490 survivors, with at that date 325,555 deaths. When we read today's New Testament reading in 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5, we quickly realise that communal suffering is most definitely not something peculiar to the 20th or 21st centuries. Communal suffering is a phenomenon the world has experienced far too many times before, brought on by man-made catastrophes such as wars, by pandemics like the Black Plague, or from natural disasters. As an example of this, I invite you to research the incredible backstory to the well-loved hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, composed and written by Lutheran pastor Martin Rinkart. When you have read Rinkart's amazing story, read the hymn lyrics. That's Lutheran hymnal number 437. Then consider that he penned this hymn amongst all the terrors. And I think there are definite allusions to suffering as a community, a newly established Christian community, depicted in today's epistle reading. Listen to this account that St. Peter shares with us. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. Suffering as a Christian. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. Yet... 
If any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end for those who do not obey the gospel of God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The telling subheading for this text in the NRSV translation is suffering as a Christian. And when we consider the circumstances behind the writing of Peter's letters, it becomes clear why he uses such vivid language. Just in verse 12, he says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking a place among you to test you. Research reveals that Peter wrote or dictated his letters in about 61 to 64 AD, while he and fellow believers were under severe persecution, both from the Jews and from the ruling Romans, whose emperor at the time was Nero. Nero was emperor from 54 to 68 AD. He was the last of the Julio-Claudians to rule the Roman Empire. In his 14-year reign, it represents everything decadent about the period in Roman history. He was self-indulgent, cruel and violent, as well as a cross-dressing ex exhibitionist, according to the Ancient History Encyclopedia. Further research reveals that Nero had a cruel, sadistic, fiery method of getting rid of the pesky Christians who flatly refused to deny their newfound faith. And for the sake of the children watching, I won't go into finer details here. Needless to say, it is a yucky slice of world history. Peter's letter, Peter's letter was his effort to encourage and inspire these new followers of the way, in spite of the mistreatment that they and he were receiving. He reminded Jesus' followers that gold and silver are refined, purified, and formed into the most beautiful jewellery in the hottest fires. And we often sing about this in the song, Refiner's Fire. Maybe you might like to have a listen to it later on. Peter's further encouragement was that in their suffering, they were in fellowship with, in step with Jesus, who suffered terribly for them and for us. Thank God, at the moment, we are not tormented by any fiery ordeals. Let's face it, our country witnessed far too much of that late last year and earlier this year. But the whole world is currently tormented by the restrictions and uncertainty surrounding COVID-19. But friends, with the help of our friend and advocate, the Holy Spirit, we are able to stand strong in this time and into the future, whatever it may hold. Whatever highs and lows, whatever joys and sorrows we may experience, whether fully healthy or in times of sickness and pain, whether financially secure or struggling to rub two pennies together, that's five cents these days, you can be assured that God's love is never, never changing, because God is never changing. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. In verse 14, Peter reminds all of his readers of Jesus' teachings about persecution and being thought weird for his sake in the Beatitudes, specifically in Matthew chapter 5, 
verses 10 and 11. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of, a, of evil against you falsely on my name. And when we read verse 16 in 1 Peter chapter 4, we might think that Peter was prophetic, able to see far into our future. Let's be reminded of what he says again. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. Today, many people when reading that verse might scoff and go off on an anti-Christian rant. Especially when we consider the many horrible sins committed in the name of Christianity down through the ages. We might even be inclined to sympathise with their ranting. But friends, if this sort of persecution is levelled at you, be as Peter and his friends. Peter and his fellow brothers and sisters in Christ were told, were taught to stay calm and don't bite back. <clears throat> and we can remember that Jesus came to save all sinners. So in the face of persecu persecution, that we might receive just because we confess to be Christian, we are urged to continue to stand firm, put on the armour of God, his love, and pick up our sword and shield, God's word, that St Paul speaks of in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. Here, Paul also encourages perseverance in prayer in all situations. Remember this, you are not alone in this. In the Holy Trinity, you have a very able and powerful ally at your side who will never leave you nor forsake you. So, if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. You bear the name Christian. So, while not being pompous about it, rejoice in it, be confident in it, and stand strong in it. In God's perfect time, we will once again be able to return to worshipping in the church. But until then, we continue to worship as the church, Jesus' people wherever and however we can, giving glory to God that we have the capacity and the capability to do so. Amen. We pray. And the peace of God that is beyond human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is our strength and our shield. Amen. So now go in peace. Cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his grace and mercy upon you. The Lord make his face shine on you and give you his peace. Amen. Now please take the time and have a look and listen at the music suggestions listed below. The final one, the Ode to Joy, was chosen well simply because it looks like a whole lot of fun. Please also read the listed Bible verses and the prayer points. God bless your week.